as a plein air painter and other plein air painters, we all have our favorite way of setting up. Uh, these are some of the tools I take with me. Uh, again, I try to consolidate it into smaller and smaller packaging, less weight, so that I'm not overloading my bag and that uh, you know I'm not leaving something critical out that I'll need when I get over there. Again, you could buy a lot of this stuff over there if you uh, don't have it or don't want to pack it with you. For example, acrylic paints will be there, oil paints if you're an oil painter, watercolor paints, so they do have art stores for paper and stuff too. But uh, you can see I compartmentalize everything. Again, a very important thing is on uh, your paints, whether they're oil or watercolors or whatever, is to put them in bags, these plastic bags, Ziploc bags, and then pack them in your big suitcase when you get, for getting overseas on the plane. Um, there's also a uh, There'll be info, more information on the website. There's a resource document on materials, how to pack materials like oil paints for traveling internationally via airline. And uh, they don't recommend you put any of it on your carry-on stuff. And that's why I put everything in my check-in bag. And then my carry-on bag, or this bag here, which is my nice day pack, is, is got medicines, I mean, you know, that type of thing, emergency gears, uh, all my clothing goes in there. All this clothing will roll up into a really tiny ball. And so it's a uh, great way of compartmentalizing and downsizing. See, I've got things compartmentalized. This happens to be uh, my pastels and charcoals. You can buy these at art stores, these little compartments or supply stores. So I've got pens and charcoals and stuff for that purpose. Uh, my this is a watercolor, small portable watercolor setup, which I use this a lot in my sketchbooking. So it's all laid out, and I'll actually carry some extra watercolor paints. You don't have to have this many types of colors. You can just reduce it down to maybe red, yellow, and blue, and uh, some black, and that's all you really need to blending stuff up. And then uh, my brush kit. There's uh, a lot of variety of brushes. that will work both for acrylics, oils, and watercolors. So I've got a number of those. I'll even whittle this down to a smaller size. Again, this is for plein air painting here in the States where I'm not traveling too much. And then this little uh, chair. This little chair is an REI chair, a little tripod chair, and very sturdy. And this is great, uh, especially when I was at San Marcos uh, Pia uh, Piazza. Uh, just tons of people and they're all, I didn't want to be obvious where I'm going to set up so I found a little corner in the shadow where they couldn't see me and then I could set this down on the ground and I could then take my uh, paper or set up my, actually my palette. This is a little portable palette. This one is made by Sienna. It's a plein air palette. It, and so it has the ability to mount to a tripod on the bottom. It has a little extra shelf, so that'll hold my brushes. This is a wood uh, palette, which I just squeeze my, in case of oils or acrylics, whatever they may be, uh, use that. There's also paper palettes you can put into here to stand up to very large uh, canvases. And uh, it's interesting, canvases I don't, unless they're really the thin canvas, not the, the um, wood frame canvases. Uh, but you can't get many of those into your bag, so I'll get into the paper that I use instead of a canvas. Uh, but this attaches to my tripod that I have. This one is a nice camera tripod. It weighs maybe two pounds at most. Uh, it's by Sunpack. 5858D is the that particular brand. It's interesting though, uh, now, even these type of kits have, have evolved. There's another one I'm getting, I've ordered in, it's called a Soltec has instead of tripod one it has its legs and everything all together and it all folds up into like a little tiny laptop computer and it's not more than maybe seven or eight pounds so I'm really excited about finding seeing that one I thought it'd be here before uh, now but they're all custom made which makes them really nice I also have a pastel kit and as an option uh, so these are pastel pencils. I can mix them with water and it turns into watercolor. But if you can see through here, these are actually watercolor sticks. So instead of packing this, 
I could eliminate that and just use watercolor sticks. I'm dipping in the water and spreading it around and using a brush to spread it. So it's a, it's, it'll be a real weight saver. So this, those things have gotten really good, the technology on those. And then, uh, as an option, this fits into my little day pack. It's just a, a you know, wood palette, which you could use if you're in oil, or you could even use it for your acrylics. But the acrylics will be a little bit touchier because it'll dry. It's exposed to the air. It'll dry really fast. You have to constantly spray them with some water. What I do now, most of the time, if I don't want to pack that easel and tripod, um, I saw a watercolor did this. They just took some mat board, about that size, and uh, just gently folded it down the middle so that I can uh, fold this up and I can turn it over, take some watercolor paper, these are 140 pound sheets. This happens to be a 300 pound, very stiff. So instead of hauling all those little uh, separate canvases for acrylics or for what or for oils, I could just use this, tape it onto here, and then use this as my uh, easel. So I could sit in my little chair or you know at a table someplace, not too conspicuous. So people are wondering what I'm doing. Um, and then I sit there and then put this on, on my knees and paint, draw and paint. And then I still have all kinds of different papers. So I could pack a lot of paper as compared to canvases uh, and rip it up in different sizes. Also, they have uh, these sheets. This is a, a tablet of watercolor paper. It's all glued around the edge. And so uh, I do whatever I'm doing on a particular scene that I'm doing and then I can just take that and rip it off. And I'm, so it's called a block, a watercolor block. So, some other odds and ends that I always have. These are great little water containers or you could use it for your solvent. So if you buy your solvent over there and uh, then you could have uh, these little containers. Uh, you could have one for solvents if that's what you want to put it in there t temporarily or just for water. Uh, this is water for spraying things, keeping things damp like acrylic so they don't dry out too fast or, uh, or your watercolors. So those are handy. They collapse. So this is the, of course I don't take all of this with me. These are some other things I use for creating textures and whatnot in my paint, paintings. Uh, this is a kind of a rubber, it's called a uh, color shaper, paint shaper. And so I'll lay some paint, let it stain the paper a little bit, then I'll take and scrape this. And it makes great rocks and architecture and stuff like that. These are rollers and whatnot. Uh, the point being is that if you take some of this type of gear, do not pack it into your carry-on bags. It has to be put into your checked-in bag, or else they'll confiscate it and throw it away. And then you've got to go buy all those expensive Italian ones when you get over there, so, which is not a bad deal. Uh, this is a handy little tool, which I found is really, I, I use it. Our airplane is coming back. <laughs> it's a mall stick. It's a little portable mall stick. So if I want to get detailed or, or painting, you know, I can have my paintbrush and I can use that to rest my hand on and control what it is I'm working with to get more accurate. Especially in the part where I want to have more realistic, I'll use this thing to steady my hand. I think that's about it.